In this section, we will see how MapReduce algorithm works. So we are going to explain MapReduce on a little example. Imagine that we have a file, pets.txt, and imagine that it's a very large file that contains various entries, dogs, cats, birds, and so on. What we would like to figure out is how many dogs, how many cats, and how many birds are in this file. So what are we going to do first is we will start from this pets.txt file, and then we are going to split it into lines. So we will have each line that will contain some of our pets. What we will do next is we are going to map these lines and we will extract the dog, cat, bird, and we are going to generate pairs, dog and number one, cat, number one, and so on. And we are going to do that for every pet that we find in the file. As you can see, this is a very primitive function in which whenever we encounter a pet, we emit a pair with the pet kind and the number one. This step in processing is called the map. So we take the output and we transform it or we extract something interesting out of it. Then we are getting to the next stage in processing, which is called shuffle. On the shuffle, we are going to move all of these entries so we have all dog entries in one place, or cat entries in one place, and then finally birds in one place. What we will do with this shuffle is that now we have all the dogs in one place, and then we can aggregate the values. And this is done in the next step, which is called the reduce step. And we find that we have four dogs, three cats, and two birds. When we get the results of this reduce step, we are going to put this all together into our result file with pet frequencies. Now, if you look at this algorithm, you're going to find that there are a couple of things of interest. First, there is a map and reduce function. This is something that you would have to program on our own. But if you look at the shuffle, you can see that shuffle can be done quite mechanically. We are going to take the kind of pet, we can use it as the primary key, and we are going to put all the values that have the same primary key in one place. Now imagine when we apply this algorithm to big data processing, we can have that all dogs are going to be processed on one computer. And then in the reduce step, we are going to collect these results and eventually store it in some files. So as you can see, MapReduce algorithm would profit a lot from brute force approach. If we have many machines on which to execute map and reduce, we can really improve the speed of processing and we can distribute our effort across many machines. Now, looking into the map reduce processing model, let's summarize a couple of interesting points. First, our input is going to be split into pieces. Different machines are going to process individual pieces. And these machines, we often call them worker nodes, will process these pieces in parallel so we could gain a lot of efficiency by having many machines. Now, if you think how is this going to run on actual machines, you can imagine that the results can be stored in local files, and then the reducers, which are also going to run on these machines, would be able to access these files and process them. So in the reduce step, we typically perform some aggregation. We are reducing the values that we have obtained from the map steps, and as we have done with the map step, we have a number of machines that are engaged in this processing. Looking into programming this type of systems, you can see that here we can talk about separation of work. We have programmers who would need to provide map and reduce functions. We will see various ways how this can be done. One can use a language API, for example, in Java, a bit tedious, but it gives us full control over the process or one can use some of the higher level languages or libraries that improve programmers' productivity. But the beauty of Hadoop and MapReduce algorithm is that the programmers can focus really on map and reduce functionality. There is a whole set of areas that are dealt with the Hadoop framework. One of the most important things when we are dealing with larger clusters is dealing with fault tolerance. The machines are going to die and we still need to provide a reliable processing. Programming a fault tolerance in systems is a very difficult task and very few programmers are having sufficient experience and knowledge to do it. The other interesting thing is that if you think about a solution in which we have lots of data stored on these different machines, we will have the assignment of worker machines 
to map and reduce tasks. This can also be done by the framework. Now, one of the very interesting things with big data framework like Hadoop is that we will actually move processing to where the data resides because we have a very large volumes of data and it would be very inefficient to move this data through the network to the processing. And this is something what we do with conventional database systems. We remove relatively small volumes of data. The other thing that the framework can do is this shuffling. So moving of data from a map processing to the reduced processing is something that can be done by the framework without a need to program that. And finally, one of the interesting areas is dealing with errors. Our programs may experience various errors and we need to provide solution to handle those errors. Now, these are all the benefits that a framework for applying MapReduce can give to us and so dramatically improve our productivity so we can focus on providing this map and reduce steps. Before we go into the programming of Hadoop, we will need to understand a little bit better how Hadoop works. And that will be the goal of our next sections.